you mention the word Scottish literature, one name often comes to mind for the majority of people, and that happens to be Robert Burns. And right, rightfully so, he is Scotland's national bard, but he does cast a very long shadow, and very often that overshadows many of the poets who have come out of Scotland, including the man who I'm going to be talking about today, who just happens to be uh, one of the most famous poets to come out of the town of Paisley, where I am just now, and that is Robert Tannehill. And you may recognise the name uh, if you are into Scottish folk music, as there is a band called the Tannehill Weavers. So for this video, I will be looking at Tannehill's life story, as well as his songs and poems. So I will be going up to where Tannehill was born, up in Castle Street, up in the west end of the town, and also going to visit the Tannehill Cottage, which is a couple of streets over on Queen Street. So I'm just going to be heading up to the west end and starting from the very beginning. Well, that's me come up to the west end of Paisley. I'm on Castle Street just now. And well, Middle Street is actually just, if you go up along the main road and turn left or right, that's you onto Well Meadow Street. And currently I am in a fairly nondescript car park which services the, the flats that surround it, the area. But back in the, the 1770s, there was a cottage on this site. And this was where in 1774, Robert Tannehill was born. And obviously since then, the cottage has been lost, it has been torn down, which is coming from somebody who does come from an, ar an archaeological background is uh, heartbreaking because again this would have been an historically significant site and a very interesting place to come and visit if it was still standing but it's still a location that even though the, the physical cottage is no longer here it is still a location that is marked and is of historical and literary significance and within Paisley and possibly within Scotland as well so I'm just going to turn the camera around and let you get a better view of the area. Well, that's Well Meadow Street up there. And this is the only thing at this location that marks it where Robert Tannehill was born on the 3rd of June, 1774. I'm not too sure if the stonework within the, the monument or memorial is from the cottage itself. It's a very simple and understated memorial. It would be quite interesting to actually see the, the footprint of the cottage. I don't know whether it is similar to the one over on Queen Street where Tannehill was brought up, but it could be interesting to look at. And that's that mural again. That's on the, the mural trail. So, yeah. This is where the cottage would have stood. So I've just come round the corner from uh, Castle Street, I'm now on Queen Street and th I've now come to the cottage that is now referred to as Tannehill's Cottage and Robert Tannehill, was him and his family moved in here when he was only a few months old and he was the third eldest within a family of seven children and it was within this cottage that the family lived and worked and like so many of the people within Paisley at the time Robert Tannehill's father was a weaver and Tannehill became his father's apprentice and learned his trade as a weaver within this cottage worked within this cottage and lived here for, for most of his life and so this was always, always, also would have been where he would have written quite a lot of his songs and quite a lot of his poems. 
and a bit like Robert Burns, Tannehill would not have actually written the music for the songs that he'd have written, he'd have written the lyrics and somebody else would have written the music to go along with it. And the story goes that Tannehill actually had built on a small table uh, onto his loom so that he could keep some paper and uh, a pen and some ink so while, so while he was working, if he had any ideas for any of his poems or any songs, he could just scribble them down and not really come away from his work. And after he finished his apprenticeship with his father, uh, there was two years from, I think it was 1779 to 1881, when T Robert Tannehill and one of his younger brothers actually went down to Bristol in England and went there to look for work. Because uh, again, like so many times within Paisley history, there were ups and downs within the weaving trades. There were a lot of times when the weavers were at work. There wasn't anything that they could do other than the possible move elsewhere in the hope of looking for employment. So him, uh, Tannehill and his brother spent two years down in Bristol, but things didn't work out. So they came back up in 1881 and Robert moved back in to the family home. And I think it was that was roughly around about the time that his dad died. So when he came back up to, to Paisley, he took over the weaving that his dad was doing within the cottage and continued to live here. His six other siblings all married and moved out and had families of their own. The only one who didn't marry or have any children of his own was Robert. He stayed here in this cottage with his mother until the day he died. And unfortunately with Robert, he did appear to suffer from bouts of depression throughout his life. And it was in 1810, he had been out with some of his friends and a couple of them had walked, walked him back to the cottage and seen him back inside. And apparently at some point in the evening, uh, Tannehill's mother had dozed off and she only woke up after he had left the cottage. And it was roughly about that time that Tannehill's friend, two of Tannehill's friends came back to the cottage and had suspected something wasn't quite right. So they came in and they realised that Tannehill wasn't in the cottage with his mother. So a search party was organised and people went out looking to see if they could find him, knowing that he was in a fragile mental state at that time. And unfortunately, Tannehill was found, but those who were out searching for him were too late. They'd actually found him uh, at a covert uh, that formed part of the Paisley Canal and I think it was up in the kind of Fergusley area of the town and they'd realised that he was there because he'd taken off his, his jacket, folded it neatly, left it on the bank of the covert and left his silver watch lying on top of his jacket. And it was, I think it was when they, they found that lying on, on the bank then realised they were too late and his body was found in the water and he was dead when, they, when, when he was found. And when his body was removed from the water, he was taken back here to the Tannhouse, to Tannhouse Cottage and he was later buried in an unmarked grave, but which is marked now in the Castle Head Kirk. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think I'll be able to get access to the Kirk itself because the, the, the kirk is actually being converted into flats but fortunately the graveyard is not going to be disturbed it's going to be left in situ so hopefully at some point maybe in the future i'll be able to go back and show you Tannehill's grave properly once that work is finished i will try and pop the uh, stop at the, the kirk itself and show you the kirk and try and show you where roughly where the grave is located within the kirkyard but won't actually be able to take you to the grave right now.
And the reason why Tannehill's grave was initially unmarked is because he had died by suicide. He had committed suicide. And back in the 18th and 19th centuries, that was still seen as being a taboo subject. It was still seen as being a sin. And that's why initially there was no marker or physical indication on the ground of where he was buried. Luckily enough now, uh, there is a grave marker, there is a memorial on the location of his grave, marking where, he, where he's now buried. And as I've said previously, unfortunately I can't actually walk up to the graveside right now because there is construction work going on. Uh, the, the car has been converted to flats. Hopefully once that work's finished, I can take you back and go up to the graveside and show you uh, where Tannehill is now buried. So I'm gonna finish this section of the video, but I will, in a minute, I will take you around the front and show you the front of the cottage. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the cottage is generally not open to the public. Uh, it's open, I think, usually on doors open day or through private viewing. It's the home of the Paisley Burns Club, which Tannehill was one of the, found the founding members, and which is also said to be the oldest Burns Club that is still in existence. So they use Tannehill's Cottage as a base and where they meet. And I think I will try and post a link to their website. So hopefully if you are wanting to maybe see inside the cottage itself, you can contact them and organise a viewing if you're wanting to, to come and visit the cottage. So I'm going to just grab a camera and head on around and show you the front of the cottage. So this is the, the front of Tannehill's Cottage. And initially, well, they would originally have had a thatch roof on this cottage. But I think it was back in the 1980s and the 1990s, there was a fire and the inside of the cottage was gutted, including the roof being burned away. And part of the stipulation for the insurance was when they replaced the roof, they had to put on a slate roof, which was seen as being more of a safety precaution. So that's why it's now got a slate roof rather than a thatch roof. So that's the uh, marker on the outside of the cottage. And this here is a statue to Robert Tannehill, which stands in the centre of Paisley. With Gauze Street over to one side and the town's famous abbey on the other side. So the statue was erected in 1883, 73 years after Tannehill's death. And the money raised was through a series of concerts, which took place on Glenford Braes between 1876 and 1883. Well, I've come up onto the, the Glenford Braes Country Park, which is on the south edge of the town of Paisley. And Tannehill was actually known for going for real long walks. There were times where he was known for walking for like 10 miles a day. And when you think that Tannehill, his right leg was supposed to be shorter than his left leg, and his right foot was supposed to be turned in a wee bit, which apparently did cause him some pain and discomfort. So the fact that he had something wrong with one of his legs and he was spending a lot of time up in the glare for breeze, going for long walks and just losing himself uh, amongst the, the nature and countryside up here. And which also went on to inspire quite a lot of his poems and his songs. And there's, there is actually quite a few of his songs and poems that 
mention of Glenifer Brays. I think one of them is actually, yeah, is actually named the, the Brays of Glenifer. And one of the, one of these songs also mentions Stanley Castle, which is actually just a short distance from where I'm just now. I think you can actually see the reservoir. It surrounds Stanley Castle from uh, just the car park, so I'll probably, I will try and show you that. And I might try and see if I can show you some of the, the country park as well. Because uh, there is a walk that's named after Robert Tannehill. It's, it's obviously, it's a Tannehill walk. And there's a Tannehill well as well. So, uh, when the, 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 the Glenford Bray's country park was created, they did purposely try and honour Tannehill and his connection to the Glenford Bray's. And I do think it's, it's a connection that could be celebrated hell of a lot more. Because I've been up here quite a few times since I moved, moved to Paisley. And I can totally understand why Tannehill was inspired by the Glenford Bray's and why it became such a, a muse for him when he was writing his songs and his poems. So I'm going to turn the camera around and let you see what is some of the things that you can see within the Clever Bay's Country Park. Okay, it is a bit, there's is some little cloud, but give you an idea of the views. So directly ahead of me is Kilpatrick Brace with the trussocks over in that direction. And you've got the Campsie Fells all the way over there, just beyond Glasgow. And you can just see Paisley just down there. And just down there you'll see a body of water. That's the Stanley Reservoir, or the Stanley Dam. And that's where Stanley Castle is located. Well, it's just directly named in one of Tanhill's songs. I think it's uh, Winter's No Law, where it uh, directly re references the Glenford Braes and Stanley Castle. So this would have been the kind of landscape that Tan Hill would have known. Up on the moor and woodland. And this is where he came to get his inspiration. I can totally see why. So I've just come round the back of Castlehead Kirk. I'll try and get a front shot for you as well. There's, there's a graveyard in there. Obviously it is very overgrown. Hopefully once the construction work's done Let's make it tidied up. But over there, you see a slightly taller memorial in grey stone with an urn on top. I think that's maybe the closest I'll be able to get to it. That is Tannehill's grave right there. And there is a path that is leading up to it. This is where the Black Handrail is. So hopefully when this all reopens again, I uh, will, as I've said before, come up and show you the show you Tip Ten Hill's grave properly and pay some pay my respects. So it's probably a, a clearer view of the Castlehead Kirk. So Robert Tannehill, uh, Paisley's Weaver poet. Uh, probably one of the most famous poets that have come out of Paisley. And yeah, I definitely believe that Dan Hill needs to be as celebrated as much as possible, to be remembered uh, and to be celebrated for the poet that he was. And th I do th see that things are starting to change and he is starting to be recognised for his contribution to Scottish literature especially with uh, the Tannehill Arts Festival taking place and with people actually remembering and taking an interest in, in his work and his life. And I do think that that is something that certainly needs to continue. 
and I, for the past few years I've actually been toying with the idea of writing a, a biography about Robert Tannehill. I, I really do need to get my fingers out and start researching and writing that because I do think it would be something of, of interest. And it was also, I did come up, I did kind of formulate that idea a few years back because it was just before, Paisley, it was just as Paisley was going for the City of Culture status for 2021, which obviously went to another city. I did actually compile and publish a collection of Tan Hill's poems uh, called The Weaver Poet, obviously with Tan Hill being called The Weaver Poet. And I currently, I think it's available in White Cart Company on the high street and is it available on Amazon as well. So yeah, if you are looking for a copy of his songs and poems, it, it, it is available. So yeah, again, hopefully you will all have enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was informative and yeah, I do hope to see you all in the next one. So if you have enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe.